What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. The Bungie Destiny 2 Combat System Changes stream earlier today was showcased and it had many many great changes and new additions to the game in terms of a much quicker PvP time to kill, weapon slot changes, how that works, the new mod system, the new masterwork system, weapons and armors and so much more people. Today I'm going to go into in-depth detail of each and every one of these things helping you understand exactly how they work in the game come the Forsaken DLC on September 4th. But before we get into that guys every month I give away a fully customizable controller for either Xbox or PlayStation. To be with a chance of winning it, simply drop a like on this video and leave a comment down below. More details on the giveaway at the end of the video, guys. Okay, so let's get into it and start with the weapon slot changes and exactly how these will work, impact the game, and change the way many of us will play Destiny 2. So if by some miracle you don't know, weapon slots and weapons you can equip to each slot are changing, resulting in setups like three shotguns being used at the same time being possible. Three shotguns, no problem. Basically you play how you want to play, but using such weapons in such slots does impact you, as you can probably imagine. But let's start with the basics. There are three weapon slots, kinetic energy and power. The difference is the kinetic primary slot and the energy slot, you can now lock both kinetic and energy weapon so if you wanted you could use an energy weapon as your primary as well as an energy weapon as your secondary power weapon stay in that power weapon slot if you notice next to the light level of the weapon you see it states primary or energy or heavy this is because the ammo system has also changed if you are using two energy weapons let's say you are using two shotguns special green ammo boxes will provide ammo for both said weapons Important to note, shotguns, snipers, grenade launchers, fusion rifles, basically weapon archetypes which have since become available to use in energy weapon slots and kinetic weapon slots, are all classed as energy weapons and only use green ammo packs. Also to note, energy weapons you can equip as your primary do not offer an elemental burn damage. There is still a lot of confusion within the community but hopefully I can explain to a degree you can understand. Weapons are locked to their said slots, so basically you cannot equip a better devils as your energy weapon in that secondary slot. You can also not equip any secondary energy weapon in your primary weapon slot. Weapons will drop to certain slots only and you can't interchange them. You can though just get energy weapons that drop for only your kinetic slots. Like I said, shotguns, snipers, fusions, grenade launchers, weapons that we will see within a Forsaken move from the power weapon slot up into the kinetic and energy weapon slot, they will be classed as energy weapons in terms of only using special green ammo crates. So like I said, if you have a shotgun in your primary and a shotgun in your secondary, both of these weapons will use special green ammo packs. If you go with a kinetic weapon in your primary and a kinetic weapon in your secondary, these will both use white ammo packs. Power weapons as per usual will only use purple ammo packs. The new weapon type, the bow, will be available in both kinetic and energy form. Power balls, I ain't sure were confirmed, but I'm pretty sure we will see them. So the ammo system is pretty simple if you roll with two energy weapons. Energy ammo is what you will need to fill those weapons clips. If you roll with two kinetic weapons, kinetic white ammo will fill those clips. Now those of you who are wondering, well if you are playing PvP, how will using three shotguns affect me when it comes to ammo? Well power ammo will be the exact same as it is now and spawn into the map every minute. Special ammo, you do spawn in with. So if you do decide to use energy weapons in your primary and secondary slots, you will spawn with ammo in these weapons. If you die, you will respawn with ammo. But when we saw them demonstrating this on stream via PvP action, shotguns and snipers would only spawn in with one shot each. But upon killing an enemy, energy special ammo drops for you to collect like them power ammo bricks when you kill somebody using power weapons currently. But with special ammo green packs, you don't have to hold any button to pick it up, you just run over it. Power ammo bricks though, you still need to hold that certain button to pick it up. Upon picking up that special ammo, it will apply a few extra shots to those energy weapons you are using. Obviously using kinetic weapons in both slots, you will have plenty of ammo to start with. Now these ammo changes I believe may not be final, but it is near to what it will be like playing PvP when the Forsaken releases. I will say though, seeing the bow in action was great. The kinetic bow exotic which we saw, the wish ender looks super fun. Being able to see through walls and basically being a two shot kill, I fell in love. I cannot wait to play with it people. Now another massive addition to the Forsaken is return of random weapon rolls. Now important to note, a lot of the year one Destiny 2 weapons will not be available when the Forsaken releases. 
but some weapons like the Better Devils will be brought up to their Forsaken weapon standards, meaning they will drop with random rolls. These Year 2 Forsaken weapons though, including the ones from Year 1 that have been brought forward to Year 2 with random rolls, cannot be grabbed from your collection vaults, which we will see introduced when the Forsaken drops. The collection vaults will only provide you with weapons you have now, Year 1 weapons. Year 2 weapons with random rolls will not be added to those collection vaults. So random rolls, what's changed and what can we expect post Forsaken? Demonstrated on stream we saw a variety of different better devils, all with different individual rolls. The first one we saw had Zen Moment, Outlaw, Tactical Mag, Steady Rounds and a selection of three sites. Another better devils we saw had Hip Fire Grip, Moving Target, Tap Mag, Steady Rounds and three sites. We then saw another better devils which was the best we saw which had Explosive Payload, Range Finder, Drop Mag and a few other perks. So we can safely say people random rolls are definitely back to how we remember them from Destiny 1. With some old perks returning too as well as some new ones being added. So let's move on to Masterworks. Masterworks now in game you use cores to make that weapon a masterwork, adding a buff to a certain stat of the weapon, I believe 5% max. That has changed slightly with the Forsaken. Masterworks on a said weapon now with the Forsaken do add those stat bonuses, but in 10 stages. So you will get a weapon drop, let's say it's the Better Devils, which you can see on screen now. Within the weapon mod section, you can then upgrade the weapon 10 times. 10 be max and when it's at that stage 10 it will become a fully pledged masterwork. Each upgrade adds 1% so 10 upgrades adds 10% boost to said stat, here that's range. Each upgrade though does get pricier, starting with just glimmer, then the addition of shards, then cores. A full 10 levels and to fully masterwork a weapon will cost a total of 10,000 glimmer, 27 legendary shards and 17 masterwork cores. Once fully masterworked, you then get an extra column appear, allowing you to pick between showing kill stats for PvE or PvP, which you can apply whenever you want for absolutely nothing. So let's move on to the new weapon mod system. This has changed dramatically. Now I will say, save all your mods you have now because when the Forsaken lands, these mods you will trade with Gunsmith for mod components which allow you to build new mods which fit into the new weapon system. So mods within the Forsaken will add what you could consider an extra perk to your weapon. We see mods for hand cannons, now I ain't sure if mods are different for different archetypes of weapons. I'd probably imagine they are, but that hasn't been confirmed yet. And I don't recall them saying anything about it on stream. So the mods we saw, where backup mag increases the magazine size, freehand grip which increases accuracy and ready speed while firing from hip, Icarus grip which improves mid-air accuracy, targeting a juster, the weapon gains a better target acquisition, radar tuner, radar immediately turns when you stop aiming down sights, minor spec, deals extra damage against rank and foul enemies, major spec, deals extra damage against powerful enemies, boss spec, increases damage against bosses and vehicles, and counterbalance stock, reduces recoil deviation for the weapon. Weapons will drop with said mods, so if you have a better devils drop with a major spec mod, if you dismantle that better devils, you receive that major spec mod allowing you to apply it to another weapon. It will cost 5000 glimmer to apply a mod to your weapon. Ok so with that out of the way, let's get back to PvP, the new time to kill mechanics, changes to abilities and so forth. Now Bungie stated during the stream, PvP is going to feel so much different, with power weapons moving up into kinetic and energy weapon slots, what does this mean for weapons like pulse rifles and auto rifles? Obviously these weapons can't do much against shotguns and fusion rifles at close range. So how and what did they do to combat that? Well they introduced a new mechanic, they have increased precision damage across the board. We as players have to revolve and aim for the head, that's basically what we've got to do to be able to put up with a fight, with them pushing this lethality up. It makes for easy killing of people spamming shotguns at close range, meaning someone like me who enjoys using an auto rifle can now stand a chance at close range against someone using a shotgun. On screen now we can see the new time to kill, 3 tap hand cannons are back, push rifles basically to burst, and check out how quick that auto rifle kills at close range when hitting the face, pretty damn insane. Other changes, melees will be a 2 hit kill no matter the subclass, so 2 hits with your melee will kill your enemy unless obviously having some form of overshield. The titan shoulder charge is now a 1 hit kill, which to be honest I loved in Destiny 1. The hunter's throwing knife has been buffed also, it isn't a 1 hit kill but it deals more damage to coincide with a 2 hit melee kill. The hunter's tether has been buffed in terms of the super being unreliable, the tether now finds targets better and quicker which is cool, so we will see less of people just running straight through 
Spirit, which I see all the time. The Warlock Stormcaller now kills much, much quicker. The Hunter's Golden Gun now lasts two seconds longer. And that's basically it in terms of buff they mentioned on stream. No doubt, other supers and other things will receive buffs too. We did see a few of their new armor perks, but they didn't go into detail on these mods. We do know armors will have two mods or perks, one affecting a certain weapon type, which will allow you to, say, have a better stability of a said weapon or more ammo reserves of a said weapon. The other perk is to do with the subclass being used, I believe, but don't quote me on that. We also got a brief glimpse at the new Titan Solar subclass tree, the Cold of the Devastator. Perks it has are Roaring Flames kills with your solar super abilities increase those abilities damage stacks up to three times Throwing Hammer throw a hammer from a distance after throwing it picking the hammer up fully recharges your melee ability Tireless Warrior after hitting an enemy with your hammer picking the hammer up triggers health regeneration and burn more Summon a flaming maul and crush enemies with the force of an earthquake which we do see in action and it looks super super fun but people on that note that is all we have to go over from the stream in terms of the new combat system and things that have changed some major major changes coming for sure and i cannot wait to experience them it should be absolutely great but guys, on that note, we have come to the end of the video. Before we leave though, let me tell you about my giveaway I do every single month. So every month I give away a fully customizable controller for either Xbox or PlayStation sent anywhere in the world. To be in with a chance of winning it, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, drop a like on the video and leave a comment down below and follow the Gleam link linked at the top of the video description. It's fast, simple and legit guys. Good luck to everybody who enters. But on that note, I am out. Thanks as always for stopping by and hopefully guys, I will see you on that next Next one. Always in the wrong, knowing where we stand. But you and I will carry on. We never get it right.